What's happening? What's shaking? What's going on out there? This is Andy coming to you again from here at my Daily Funk Club headquarters. And today's going to be a real fun um, video because we're going to do a shootout of the Nordstrand Audio P bass pickups. I have several instruments, P basses here, each with um, Nordstrand P bass pickups in them, but uh, each instrument has a different um, version of them. So we're going to hear them and talk about them and check them out. And maybe it'll help you to get an idea of the different uh, characteristics, characteristics <laughs> each pickup brings to the table. So we're starting with the NP4, which is the straight up um, vintage correct uh, P bass pickup. And it's in a completely passive instrument. This is a gamma body. A lightweight alder gamma body with a roasted maple um, warmth neck, and it has a Babix bridge on there. Round wound strings 45 to 105 by Black Diamond. My strings, the ones I always use. That's with the tone all the way up. Now tone halfway. tone all the way down. Here with a pick, tone halfway with the pick. It. There is the NP4 Vintage Correct in an alder body, rosewood neck, rosewood fingerboard. Next, we're going to go to the NP4A. This is a custom instrument from Bluesman Vintage. It's like a 59 relic replica. This one has the NP4A, which features the um, angled pole pieces. The way that I would describe this pickup is that it has all of the awesome attributes that the N NP4 Vintage Correct does with a slightly more um, robust and hyped low mid bump. So it tends to be slightly more aggressive but not overly in your face. Cuts through the mix fantastic and just offers a little bit more um, of a, an aggressive passive low mid you know, uh, throat. Uh, as uh, as the difference between that and the NP4 straight up vintage crack. And this is with the tone all the way up. Okay, 
Okay, so now we're here with the pick. Tone all the way up with the pick. seems like it has a sliver more output not much just that because the the low mids are, seem to be a little bit more aggressive and jump out more sounds louder and next we're going to go to the power blade this is a 1983 Fender Squire Japan body with a um, hip shot, kick ass bridge, and a more recent uh, five, four or five year old USA GNL JB neck. And um, it has a wonderful tone. This one for the tone all the way down setting the best. So perfectly murky and but just huge and big and, and, and fat and round. And in terms of that thud. kind of sound or or soul sound with the tone all the way down bringing up the tone back up a little bit to about halfway grabbing the pick <laughs> these pick 
pickups have the most output out of all of them. So they're tightened up. Um, they're down in the base farther than any of the other ones are. That's going to decrease the output a little bit and also take away a little bit of the high end. Um, the reason I did that is because they're really high output and because I play real hard. So for me, I like them sunk into the bass a little bit more. If I was to bring them out a little bit, a little bit closer to the strings, the high end would, would come up a little bit and so would the output considerably. Here, let's hear it with the tone control all the way up and the pick again. that they all have the same brand of strings and they all have the same type of strings which is that 45 to 105 nickel round wham. however these ones are a little bit more worn out so they're slightly more dull sounding those two have pretty pretty new strings on them and the last one I want to show you also has the power blades but this one has flat wound strings on it and this instrument is a 1977 Aria Pro with uh, everything is stock except for the pickups, which are the power blades, and the bridge, which is an old vintage Ken Smith bridge from the 80s. So first we're going to hear it with the tone all the way up. going to translate onto the video I hope it translates well but using this rig this is the Mesa Boogie strategy 888 all tube head the Mesa Boogie uh, subway ultralight 210 cabinet and the Gensler BA 410 3 cabinet I'm running it all together and this thing is like a is is like you know a, a, a super punchy rig with that great tube warmth So now let's hear it with some picking. Tone all the way up. I wish you could really feel how much that punches. How much each of those, you know, those uh, those staccato pitches. So there 
video for you for today. We checked out the NP4 straight up vintage correct uh, passive P bass pickup. Then we checked out the NP4A with the um, angled pole pieces and to my you know perception a kind of um, accentuated low mid bump and a little bit of throaty authority. And then the power blade, which we heard on a round wound string bass and a flat wound string bass. This one has a lot of output and a lot of low end. A really, really nice, um, well, um, or um, equal, equal amount of uh, frequency range and dynamic range, very dynamic pickup. And um, it just has a really great um, personality to it. It's very unique. So there's something for everybody. There's something no matter what you're after. I kind of think if you're a heavy, dirty player, you know, if you're really dirty on the front side grind kind of a thing, the NP4A is the way to go. I think that they break up the best. Um, if you're looking for just a well-rounded pickup that will do anything and um, has a really, really nice, clear high end and kind of a crystalline uh, presence and shimmery high end, then the power and a, and a big huge low end, then the and 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 uh, a lot of output, then the power blade is for you. And if you just want a vintage correct P bass pickup that sounds like a vintage correct, like a vintage P bass should sound, a really really good vintage P bass, a really good '60s P bass. If you're looking for that sound, um, then the the NP4 is the way to go. So thanks for watching this video. Thanks for watching all the videos. And uh, we'll see you next time. All right, friends. Peace.